Last time on Square Roots, Jim spills his guts, Matthew is actually good at something, John forgets to wear his important blue shirt, and Vanessa realizes that the only way to win is not to play. A strange game. Square Roots Podcast. My name is Matthew Van Zant. Oh wait, I didn't say it right, did I? I'm supposed to say the classic RPG podcast. Or should I say the internet's only classic RPG podcast? I, I googled uh, classic RPG podcast before Square Roots started and uh, Google just broke. It was yeah. like, what? No. <laughs> I don't. We don't understand. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and listen, I know that there are some imitators out there, but those mm-hmm. aren't classic RPG podcasts. Those are Square Roots knockoffs. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. My name is Matthew Van Zant. Ooh. I'll be your host this week, along with my dear friend, John Tenderoni Brandon. I am. John, you made me say that, and I don't know why. It's because I'm a PYT, a pretty young thing. St- Still don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Don't worry about it. Is that Leonardo DiCaprio's club? <laughs> yes. <laughs> the Tenderoni Tossy. <laughs> That's exactly <laughs> what it is. It turns out that in this lovely two-hander, two-completion, uh, it's just Matthew and I for this episode. We enjoyed doing last week's two-hander to uh-huh. full completion. Well, but I think so much. This one's definitely we... to completion. We were just <laughs> edging last time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. I know last week we said that we finished our two-hander to completion, but we actually were just edging and this week we're really going to finish. Oh. We're going to finish all over. Oh. So, um I mean, do we should we give a brief explanation? Where is everyone? Why is it just you and me? I don't know. Do you want to make something up? <laughs> uh, well, Jim had an appendix removed, so he gets, I think, one more week of, uh, of like, what's the word I'm looking for? He gets one more go around of paid leave of excuse. Mm-hmm. He gets one more week of excuses, and then uh, Vanessa, I think, uh, went back to her home planet. I think Vanessa went back to her home planet. Maybe they'll be back next week for our first episode of Fallout. Maybe they won't. Speaking of, have I mentioned what this show is all about? What is this show all about? Square Roots is a classic RPG podcast where we play your very favorite classic RPGs. One chonker at a time. One chonkerino. One chonk. I'm trying out different versions. Mm. One chonk at a time i'm no i'm really not a fan of that one and uh maybe uh let me let me try it a little uh a little ooh. softer one chunk at a time ooh <laughs> cuz we know that uh several listeners like to put this on as our soothing voices lull them to sleep all right john you need to stop now before i have an awakening. <laughs> <laughs> a Dragon Age awakening. <laughs> no, not that. Oh. What are we playing this week, Jonathan? Well, we are finishing the game Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. And this is episode five of our Ocarina of Time coverage. Um, You know, I got to tell you, listeners, this was a real heroic effort on the part of John and I. We bit off more than we could chew several times this season. <laughs> yeah. I think that's – I would call this experiment a failure. I think we need to stick to easy RPGs – not easy RPGs, but RPGs that are easier to play than these because, uh, once again, this has destroyed our show. I guess. 
Um, well, I'm happy to say that I didn't pick it, so don't blame me. <laughs> I know you would think that it would be me that picked it, but I was not the one who picked. But we're all think, excited Vanessa. about Fallout next week. It's true. Uh, next week, as John just mentioned, we will be beginning our Fallout coverage. That's going to be how many parts, John? Uh, five. Five parts. Short one, too. Wow. Yeah. Uh, so another five-parter. I got it installed and running this morning after finishing up Ocarina of Time. So I'm excited. What What was the issue you're having with the crashes? Uh, I don't know what it was, but I uninstalled it. First of all, I realized probably what it was is that I had it installed via Steam right. and via good old games. Oh, yeah. That might cause some issues. So I uninstalled both copies. And reinstalled the good old game copy mm-hmm. with a with a uh, icon right on the desktop instead of going through the good old game launcher, which I think also might help with stability. Hmm. Now, yeah. I, the, I know the version that I have on Steam has uh, uh, the widescreen support, like it can go uh, widescreen, which is really nice uh, and, you know, full 1080p. Mm-hmm. What about yours? I don't know. We should save this talk for next week. Okay, yeah, we'll talk <laughs> about that. Because I played around with it for five minutes. Because I it definitely the game looks better than I thought it would. Uh, considering uh, the age, I have to mess with that because it looks horrible on my computer. Yeah, if you can't get the geo, the GOG version working out, uninstall that and install the Steam one because uh, I've got it looking nice. Ish, I mean, nice for an old game. But yeah, let's uh, skip this talk for later. Um, well, before we dive into our regular coverage, uh, before we finish off this two-hander, we should talk about how we leveled up. Oh, boy. John, would you like to start us off? Yeah, I actually did quite a bit this week. I, uh, okay, let's see. Level up one. I'm, I'm gesturing to Matthew. (laughs) Oh, uh, uh. It can be lots of fun. Is that what it is? Yeah. Uh, You can have lots of fun. I went to a homosexual drinking establishment last night for the first time in like, I don't know, a year. That was interesting. It was was fun enough. Uh, A couple of friends of mine were there. So that was actually, I went with my buddy Julio and then other friends of mine were there. I felt like someone who knew people. And uh, that was fun. But my real level up, my level up two. Well, hang on. And how is Julio? He He's got good? tipsy. We both drink, drank equal amounts of beer, which was half a pitcher each. Mm-hmm. And he got very drunk, which is That's weird because he's 100 pounds heavier than me. Maybe he's just out of practice. No, he drinks a lot more than I do, too. Maybe he just hadn't eaten anything. And number two. There's so much we can do. You can eat a bunch of poo. I forget the song, John. <laughs> You're just not a New Kids on the Block fan. No, I'm not. Um, so number two. Uh, More like old kids on the block these days. Am I right? I got a new set of headphones for streaming. Uh, they are Surround Sound 7-1 wireless headphones. They also work on PS4 and Switch. And uh, they are amazing. Nice. They glow, although apparently that kills the battery life, so you're supposed to turn it off right away. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. Why do you need <laughs> lights on your headphones? Yeah. Uh, gamer stuff is always dumb, basically, especially gamer PC stuff. It's just like, this glowing mouse is radical. It looks like a stealth fighter. But this, like, I played Fallout 4 um, with the 7-1 enabled. And it was like you could hear the raindrops hitting your suit. I was in the power armor. You could hear voices cool. like far off on one side behind you. And just the way that it it, uh, it does the phasing was incredible. It sounds so good. When I was like 16, I got the Creative Labs 3D Sound Blaster. As well as a set of surround sound speakers for my PC. Ooh, so you could play Dark Forces? I played a lot of, it was excellent, because I played a lot of Thief, 
Ooh. and System Shock. Mm-hmm. And those games used that 3D sound thing, whatever the fuck it was. And it really did work a lot like that, like really well, where I was like, holy shit, I can hear them like off in the distance behind me. Yeah. And I can so hear cool. the monsters like two corridors over groaning and I can pinpoint their location. It's really neat. It's definitely now I play PUBG with headphones on and I like circle in place for ten minutes trying to figure out who's shooting me. Hmm. Yeah, I should try PUBG and see if it works well because it it depends on the sound design in the game too, right? Ah, uh, yes, I imagine it does. Yeah. Speaking of, is PUBG on sale on PC? I don't know. I think it's ten dollars on Xbox right now. I should look and see if it's on sale on PC. The, no, to uh, be fair, I. I think I am finally fucking sick of PUBG. <laughs> oh, why don't you get on PC so we can play together? Eh, for ten bucks, I'll play it. We'll play around. But. Yeah, there. Uh, the, I think one of the last times I played, someone was uh, cheat hacking and was driving a car through a building. So that wasn't great. Yeah, you see, I see a lot of stuff like that. It's uh, worse on PC than it is on Xbox, apparently, and it's pretty obnoxious. Yeah, it's like, well, I don't. I've never understood why people cheat at games at multiplayer games i mean i understand why people cheat at single player games but when you're playing with other people like oh i'm griefing them it's so fun i actually um (laughs) unsubscribed from a podcast where uh, they have a new host on it and he was talking about how some new game was going to give people options oh mario maker 2 was going to give people options that'll be amazing for griefing and i was like unsubscribe i don't need your shitty opinions on i don't want to listen to this guy (laughs) fuck you don't ruin yeah, the game for other right. people. That's Don't awful. Don't ruin the game for other people. Yeah. Did I tell you about how I was featured on someone's stream? No. Okay. Uh, I'll get the website for you. You can see if you can if you're on there too. Um. So there is a website you can go to where you can search by your own name, and if anybody has streamed you, if anybody was streaming and you popped up on their radar, I assume via, you know, a fight. Oh. Then it'll find you and it'll show you. That sounds amazing. I had had two streams, one from me and one from my friend Paul. And Paul got killed. (laughs) And then I jumped off a roof and shot the person that killed him. And then I stood there and reloaded my gun and shot that person. I knocked that person. And then I stood there and reloaded my gun and shot them in the face. (laughs) Nice. Uh, that's pretty normal for me. Like, I don't always get thirsty, but sometimes I just want to kill someone. So, you know, that seems fine. But I went and watched this stream, and these guys went on, like, a 15-minute fucking rant about me because I <laughs> thirsted one of them. And they were like, I don't understand. They were British. They're like, I don't understand why someone would do that. And I was just like, go oh, fuck yourself, that's how guy. Ca- like, in that case, you – literally are encouraged to do that you want to knock people because that way they don't get revived like revived by the teammates well it's on the one hand yes on the other hand i mean it's a better strategy to maybe knock someone and then go find your buddy and pick them up but sometimes you just don't fucking want to do that and you just want to shoot someone Mm. and that's okay too Mm -hmm. we're all playing the same game anyway it was pretty funny i watched both streams you can see that's two different guys and you can see the guy that I kill is losing his mind. He's like, he's reloading in front of me. Come save me. Come save me. He's going to thirst me. He's going to thirst me. And then I shot him. And he's like, and this guy legit, like, the way they went into the menus and bitched at each other about it for 15 fucking minutes. Yeah, we'll have to put the link into uh, the Facebook group. I'll see if I can find it. Um, They do go down after a while, though. But uh, it was pretty funny. I don't know. Like, that's just, that is how I play that game. I don't play PUBG for wins. I play yeah. PUBG to go kill a bunch of people and have fun. Yeah. That is what I'm there for. But I'm not cheating. That's not I'm playing the because game. it, yeah, it is playing the game. The game is about killing people on an island. It's, you know, you're not like trapping someone in a room or something, you know. Anyway, uh, number three is that uh, there was a game on sale. I and really. I, I, Need to pee. Oh, no. Uh, I decided to buy Persona Q1, not Persona Q2, which is a uh, dungeon crawler, a spinoff mm-hmm. of Persona 3 and 4. Where It's based on the Etrian Odyssey games, right? Yes, that is correct. 
And uh, so it's like a alternate universe where three and four meet up. Uh, it takes place during the Typhoon in Persona 3. And what's interesting is there's t- basically two versions of the game. You can play through centering on the Persona 3 cast or play through centering mm-hmm. on the Persona 4 cast, which is pretty cool. That means a lot of replayability because I think it's a long game, too. Mm-hmm. And it's it's cute seeing just you know new stuff with your favorite characters. The music is fantastic. Uh, so uh, definitely uh, recommend it so far. Yeah, I am uh, very interested in those games, but even I just I haven't played Persona 4 and I don't want to know a single thing. Right. And we'll be playing <laughs> like, that. Don't even are there characters in that game? I don't know. And I don't want to know. <laughs> we'll have to play that pretty soon after Bio January. Mm-hmm. Anyway, Matthew, how did you level up? Uh, well, Jonathan, I leveled up mostly by watching too much television. <laughs> Oh, boy. It is peak TV. I watched a show called Good Omens. The show so nice, I watched it twice. Uh, Good Omens is an Amazon Prime original and is based on the Terry Pratchett and Neil Gaiman book of the same name. It is the story of two uh, angels. One, a fallen angel, so a demon, I suppose. Uh, One, a... Normal angel, I guess, and uh, as they try to avert the apocalypse because the Antichrist has been born. If you've ever read a Neil Gaiman or a Terry Pratchett book, you can pretty much guess what you're in for. Mm -hmm. The television show starring David Tennant and Michael Sheen is amazing. Uh, there's a lot of pushback against me saying Michael Sheen was not attractive. Uh, so I apologize to Michael Sheen and his admirers. <laughs> and the Michael and the Sheen heads, the Michael Sheen community. Yeah. The Sheen uh, queens. Michael Sheen is a plenty handsome boy, but that's not the point. The point is that the show is excellent. And I feel like I could talk about it for hours, but you haven't watched it. So what's the point? Uh, listeners, just do yourself a favor and go watch Good Omens. Uh, the relationship between the main characters is incredible. Uh, it's nice that you can, uh, it is subtextually a queer relationship, and I don't think that they bury that text very far, uh, which is pretty cool. But you can also view it as just a friendship if you, if you see it that way. Mm-hmm. Um, I think, no, I think either interpretation works. I think it's still excellent regardless, and they are just incredible. There's a picture of how they left uh, Terry's what, hat and scarf in the front center chair at the premiere. And that was very, that was sad and sweet. As for me, level up number dose. If you enjoyed Good Omens like I did, you might find yourself in the mood for something kind of else kind of weird and wacky and satirical. So I chose to watch the first two and only two seasons of Amazon Prime's The Tick. The Tick. John, do you have any familiarity with The Tick? Only from the cartoon in Saturday mornings in the, what, mid-90s? I want to say. I didn't like it. Really? It was my favorite cartoon as a kid. Or one of my very favorites. But, uh, well, The Tick on Amazon Prime, it's excellent. The first season is a little uglier. Not as much money was spent. The costumes aren't very good. But the first season has a excellent arc with Arthur. They do a really smart thing where they make Arthur, the sidekick, kind of your way in and more of the protagonist as opposed to the tick himself who never really worked as a protagonist because he's too wacky. Yeah. The second season looks a lot better and continues the story of those characters, but they're both relatively standalone. Uh, It did get canceled. I think it's worth watching those two seasons. Uh, just to get an idea of it, if you're interested, it's very good, listeners, so check that out. And finally, uh, I am in the middle of, it's funny, because, so where do you go from Good Omens? I want to I want to watch something else funny and satirical, but action-y and entertaining. I think I'll watch The Tick. So I'll watch The Tick. I'm like, well, I'm still in the mood for weird, now I'm in the weird for weird superheroes, so what should I watch next? I started watching Doom Patrol. Um, what's that? Wow. Uh, so listener and friend of the show, Tracy has been talking about it on Facebook for months. It's her favorite show. It is a part of the DC universe subscription. 
Oh, okay. Along with Titans and the recently canceled Swamp Thing. And it is about a, a group of superheroes known as the Doom Patrol. I'm only about halfway through it. It's a bit like the X-Men, except instead of being a like allegory for race and that type of thing, it's more of an allegory for disability huh. and mental illness. Not a huge fan of the Doom Patrol characters or anything like that, so all I can really say is this is, you know, other than here and there in some cartoons and, and guest appearances in comics, uh, my first real exposure to the group, and the show is phenomenal. But I'm only about seven episodes into a 15-episode season, so uh, I don't want to say too much about it. But anyway, that's how I leveled up, gang. And I think, unless John has anything to add, it's probably about time that we... Talk about some fairy tales. Are you ready for some fairy tales? Are you ready for the quest log? Quest log. Yeah, we did it. All right. John. Yes, sir. I anticipated that this level would cause you to throw your DS across the room again. It didn't, but I didn't <laughs> like it. I would say I've been uh, managing my uh, anger. at. The, I've gotten better at the game, so that helps. Like, it's definitely a game you can get better at. What led us... Where did we leave off last time? We had just finished the... Uh, the sp- Shadow Temple? Shadow Temple, yeah. And I think they kind of hinted that you needed to head west, but they didn't really tell you or east. Uh, the the uh, Navi tells you to uh, go to the Gerudo uh, fortress. So you head east to the to the eastern side of Hyrule Field, where I at least had not spent much spent much time. There really wasn't much over there. I did uh, go grab the. Uh, uh, I unfroze the king of the Zora, and he gave me a blue shirt. Mm hmm. Uh, I uh, went and did the side quest of getting doing that item thing where you're you're finding different people and they're giving you these timed runs to go like you have to get the um a prescription over to uh King Zora and then King Zora tells you to go talk to this other guy and uh finally I talked to Biggeron and Biggeron I think I talked about it last time. Biggeron is the cutest. He's just a giant yes, you did. Goron. And uh eventually I got the broken sword. I got Biggeron his eye drops that he needed, which required running around to various places. And oh yeah, I had to bring a frog over to get turned into medication somehow. What? It was really cute. And uh, the Biggeron gives you the Biggeron sword, which does not mm-hmm. break. The Medigoron sword breaks. So the, it's. What's that? That's the medium sword. Remember you said there's a sword that breaks? Mm-hmm. And that's the Medigoron sword from the, the, the medium sized Goron who's in the Goron town. So you, gay, you went and got Biggeron's sword, which is a giant two handed sword. Yes. That does How'd double, that work out for you? It does double the damage of a regular sword, but you can't use a shield. So for one of the dungeons, it wasn't super useful, uh, the one where you have to reflect things. But uh, otherwise, yeah, uh, I got I got to slice through some fights that would have been otherwise pretty annoying. Did you fight? Yeah, so you found that it, it made the combat easier? Yes, for sure. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, that and and the buff that you get after uh, at the beginning of the uh, uh, the final castle. I was gonna go run and do a bunch of these side quests before I did Ganon's castle, but the Spirit Temple took me so long that I was just in no mood and decided to just go run through Ganon's castle. So I did not end up doing many of these side quests, unfortunately. Oh, well, that's okay. Uh, how many hearts did you end up with? Uh, Sixteen. Nice. I had fifteen. I had 50-something Sculptulas by the end. I think I had like 
48 or 49. Like I had real close to go get whatever the last thing from them was and or whatever the next thing from them was. Yeah, I, I, could, I, I actually just didn't bother. I was like, eh. I'm just about to finish the game. It probably I didn't matter. bother either. What's the point? It's just going to be like a heart piece. I got the big wallet, and I never used that mon- that many rupees at any time. <laughs> oh wait, no, no, that's not true. I did use them to buy all the magic beans. Oh yeah, yeah, that's definitely one good thing because uh, I'd used the magic bean to get a heart piece and stuff. Uh, so that, but that really helped having the bigger on sword. Uh, although it's not useful in this next area the gerudo fortress which is kind of a cute area so you get to gerudo the little gerudo tent where the uh this uh, construction captain is and he says mm-hmm. there's a there is a broken bridge and mm-hmm. you have to hook shut across hook shot across it or ride your horsey across i tried that and couldn't get her across you have to be going like medium speed at Weird. least and uh it's always cute you get a nice shot of the horsey jumping across the gap and uh, so I talked to the guy and he's like, oh, hey, all my carpenters have been kidnapped by the ladies, the Gerudo ladies. And you have to go rescue them. Yeah, he tells you that the Gerudo, that they have gone to join the Gerudo clan. But then when you get there, they're like, no, nah, we got thrown in jail. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because uh, it turns out that Gerudo town is a ladies only. Exactly. The, well, you find a lot more about the Gerudo this time, that there's only one Gru- Gerudo born for every, like, hundred Gerudo ladies. A thousand. A thousand. Oh, wow. It seems like a, kind of a bad call this time, because he does not seem to like the ladies. I got a real gay vibe from Gannon in this <laughs> one. <laughs> oh, he's the Gr- he's the male Gerudo. Duh. Yeah. Yeah. I did not get that. <laughs> um. Uh, so th- this place is all pro Ganondorf. They're all about Ganondorf. Um, if they see you, you get thrown into prison. Unfortunately, they don't take away any of your stuff. They just throw you in the bottom of this pit. And it turns out, uh, your hookshot can just take you right out of there. Uh, I thought the first couple of times that I had to, uh, warp out of there and go back to like, uh, Hyrule, <laughs> like, oh, this is terrible. But no, it's, it, you just can, you can just escape. Why would you do that? I didn't look up. Um, this area is, I think, okay. I don't know why the game thinks it's okay to introduce a stealth section at the end of the game. It's not okay. And it doesn't work particularly well, but that kind of works in its favor because it's not particularly hard. No. It's just um, Once annoying. I realized, I didn't realize this at first, but once I found out that you can shoot them in the head with an arrow to oh, knock them out. A- anywhere in their body. It doesn't even have to be the head. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, that made it a lot easier. So I, I would just ran through and knocked them all out. It did take me a while to find the fourth prisoner. He's kind of hidden. Yeah, you have to go in through a, separate, a different entrance than the one you're kind of coached to use. Because there's one entrance that gets you the first three. And uh, you'll notice those are the big carpenter boys from the town. The sons. The fail sons. Mm-hmm. Uh, my oh, big, they are. My big sweaty boys. They're running around, flapping their arms. And uh, yeah, so, they, they're real bummed out because they came here for a good time. They came here to Well, here's people. a fun fact. Okay. You can, once you... Get arrested, hook shot up to whatever, the the area that – the entrance, the exit to the prison. There is a treasure chest on the roof of the Gerudo Fortress, mm-hmm. and you can hook shot directly to that treasure chest. And from there, you can drop down and go directly into the fourth prisoner's entrance. Oh, okay. And I must have walked by it a th- thousand fucking times <laughs> well yeah they're not i kind of wish there was some identifying mark on each of the doors so you can know which ones you how have. about just a map yeah there's no map for this area too that's is, all it needs yeah it needs a map well anyway you rescue you rescue uh john's fail sons and then a gerudo uh, each one is in a in a jail cell and each time you find one you have to fight a gerudo and this is these are kind of weird fights because if they hit you two or three times you get stun locked basically and they send you back to prison i that happened to me once i found these fights like as i said i i've got better at this game like i found that pretty easy so it only it happened to me twice i want to say and i, I uh, bet but i the, was the bigger on sword had helped because they went down a couple of hits 
Yeah. I mean, they're not, they are not tough fights. I don't think any of the fights in this game are tough. You just mm. do a lot of locking on and circling until they do their little attack animation and then you hit the attack button. That's all you got to do. Yeah. Once I got the hang of it, um, I'm still like, I still think that anything that's airborne sucks. But uh, with, uh, yeah, the, the combat's fun. Now that I've got it, I will say that. I, I retract my statements what? that the, the combat's terrible. I just. What? <laughs> what? What? I'm sorry. You can't say that. Oh, I can say whatever I want. You motherfucker! All you've done is complain. Well, now that episodes. I, now that I've got it, I still like. There's still so many frustrating things, but yeah, I've got the combat down. So I, I went through it pretty. And I think maybe making it a little bit easier with the sword helped. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, I, I went through all the combat encounters. The the stealth was annoying because they are they can if they can see you they can basically see you across the map and it whistles and starts you over and that's not a good mechanic. Really, it's, I never had that happen. I was able to stay like as long as I was like five feet away from them, they see, seemingly could not see me. I got caught maybe thirty or forty times. Oh like, my gosh, it was a lot. That's uh, weird. And I did not of, get caught a bunch, particularly once I started knocking them out. Yeah. And you but, get a lot um, of arrows, too, which is nice, because I would have felt very mad if I'd run out. Yeah. Um, boy, I had some running out issues with all sorts of stuff towards the end of this game. It was frustrating. I ran out of magic a bunch of times. In the le- uh, It's nice in the final dungeon that there's a shop where you can get everything you need. There is? Yeah. Under the bridge. You just have to use your... Lens of Truth. Oh, I did see those. They're Deku's, right? Yeah, yeah. And they, I like ignored them. Uh, oh. I so I kept one jar for magic, and then the, there's also fairies in that area too. So it's super useful. But uh, for this one, uh, well, there's there's only so there's one final boss fight after you rescue the fourth one. <laughs> rescue all your fail sons, and uh, the the leader of the Gerudo fight too is like, well, uh, I guess there is a man who's worthy. And uh, you you have a final battle with her, and uh, oh, that is the leader. It's just leader. the fourth one. It's a Naruto. What was he? Naruto. This also gives you access to the uh, two things. It gives you access to the horse training grounds, which is a fun mini game we can talk about at the end. And it gives you access to the Gerudo training grounds side quest, which is a mini dungeon that is not difficult. Um, but does require basically all of the items in the game. So I did, but I did that, and the reward for the Gerudo training grounds is the ice arrows. I didn't use those fucking things once. <laughs> What's the point? Nabur- uh, Naboru. Naboru. So, uh, yeah, the, I I didn't, th- I just read what you get from doing it, and I just kind of wanted to finish this game. So I did the horsey back one because you get a little, you get a chunk of heart. Yeah, that's a that's a mini game. We could talk about that at the end. Yeah, uh, that's a good one. I liked that one a lot. I like uh, Nabooru. It's interesting how many strong women are in this game. There's three strong female warriors in this game. There is uh, Impa, there is Sheik, and there is Nabooru. And Noboru is interesting because you find out quite a bit more about her. She is very pro Ganondorf. She uh, the re- the reason the guards are all arresting you is that they've been converted to being in support of uh, Ganondorf, which makes sense because he's like king of the Gerudo because he's the only uh-huh. man. Um, but you learn a bit more about her. But she tells you that you've got to cross the desert to get to the Desert Colossus, which is also the temple of or the Spirit Temple. Why Why does this dungeon get a special name? Do they have special names and I didn't realize it? No, I think just this one has a desert col- uh, colossus. I think the thing is that this dungeon is kind of its own thing and not just the Temple of Spirit. Like it has its own name in, with the Gerudo. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you have to cross. sense. You have to cross the desert. And the first part of the crossing the desert is following the flags. Yeah, so you finish the Gerudo Fortress, they open a big gate for you that leads out to the desert, and this is basically the Lost Forest Part 2. You have to follow the flags, and if you get lost, you get teleported back to the entrance. That's not, I, I, I 
I never got teleported back to the entrance, so it wasn't so bad. I even went to that uh, side building with the shop. Uh, uh, it happened to me once, but it wasn't too difficult. Um, it's not a it's not a tough area, but it's it's all right. You're gonna. So I really like uh, I, I like this section because it was a nice little break. It was pretty. Uh, it was fun. It was easy. Like the only There's annoying lots of pose. <laughs> lots of pose. Yeah. Well, you get to the this uh, little uh, temple in the midpoint. And it says you have to follow a spirit, but only those who can see with the eyes of truth, which is like just it, it, basically there's a sign that says use the lens of truth. Yeah. Speaking of pose, did you ever get the fourth bottle? No, I looked up what you had to do to do it. And you have to defeat all 10 big pose that are on the Hyrule map. Mm-hmm. And uh, Johnny don't have time for that. Yeah, I didn't do it either, because I didn't need it. What's the point? Why make it so hard? <laughs> I mean, the point is that people want 100%. I like that the the reward for uh, getting all 100 Sculptulas is a golden rupee. 200 rupees. That is horseshit. Except Are you fucking kidding me? It does respawn every time you go back into the Sculptula house. Oh, that's cool. So you have unlimited funds, but who cares? Yeah, I, who cares? I think you it's don't just, need money. It's collecting for collecting's sake, for fun. It is. I can see. I, I. There are aspects of this game that I do wish were a little more RPG ish, and and this is kind of one of the places where it fails. You got all this money, you can't do anything with it. Yeah. Once you have the the five hundred uh, gold piece, or is it rupee, rupee. wallet? Uh, you don't really need money anymore after that. Anyway, uh, you make it to the. Through the desert, you make it to the Desert Colossus, a.k.a. the Spirit Temple, where Sheik is waiting for you, and she will teach you a song uh, that will let you warp back and forth from and to the Desert Colossus. But you may go into the entrance of the Desert Colossus, but you can't do anything, because the only direction you can go to the to the right is a tiny crawl space that Adult Link cannot fit in. There's also signs at the front that say you have to be a child to do the first part and then switch back to an adult for the, after you get the silver gauntlet. Yeah, it does. <laughs> <laughs> so good thing uh, Sheik taught us that song because we're about to do a minimum of four warps. Well, bef- let's before we get there, I want to talk about the cutscenes here. They're kind of important. Okay. Uh, first, there is Sheik. Uh, Sheik comes in and tells you that uh, you have to kind of mess around with time. Uh, and then uh, you get to observe a scene with Nabaru uh, as a younger woman. Uh, this okay, is- hang on. Yeah? Oh, no, that's that's after the time travel. But Well, no, you're right. Well, yes. But if that's Nabaru, then it can't be Nabaru that we met at the Gerudo Fortress. Why is that? Because Nabaru in the present is... Captured by Twin Rova. Yeah, uh, no. no. Yeah, you save her. Yeah, uh, <clears throat> yeah. What happens is Nabru in Ch- uh, Child Link timeline uh, gets captured by Twin Rova uh, because she's super against Ganondorf. She uh, knows he's a corrupt king and shouldn't be leader. And then Twin Rova corrupts, uh, kidnaps, and corrupts her, and that's why they are all pro Ganondorf after. Oh, gotcha. There, there's that actually sense. a bit of story going on. Yeah. I didn't quite follow it. So, uh, as John said, you 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 get the, the cutscene with Sheik. You are going to warp back to the temple. I want to talk about the cutscene with Sheik. I thought you just did. What no. else is there to say? <laughs> I just love these cutscenes with Sheik. Every time Link like approaches Sheik, Sheik uh, pieces out with a ninja smoke bomb. Every time. I love it. And uh, yeah, uh, Link was trying to get close to Sheik for some reason. And, and Sheik's like, nope, gone. Ninja Smoke Bomb. Every time. Uh, yeah. I love that. I just want to say it's a great running joke that Sheik's just always out of there. So uh, back to the Temple of Time. Replace the Master Sword. Warp back to the Desert Colossus. Mm-hmm. Did you and get now- the... Um, there's a temple or a great fairy there that gives you defensive magic i never once used it but yes i did either (laughs) (laughs) 
Uh, I tried to use that wind spell a couple of times in this dungeon, and it never seemed to work right for me, so I also totally gave up on that piece of shit. Yeah, because... Yeah. there. I, I Right when I got to the boss room, I was like, oh, I should use the wind magic just in case I die. But it's like, oh, you can't use it in this boss room. You could use it in the room before. Come on, game. Get your crap together. Oh, yeah. Is that what that is? It, it like, goes out. It's really dumb. Anyway... Child Link walks into the Desert Colossus Spirit Temple, and lo and behold, who is standing in there poking around but Nabaru? Uh huh. And Nabaru. And she wants them silver gauntlets. She sees the tiny crawl space and says, Well, you're a child. Why don't <laughs> you crawl into that dark hole and, you know, see what's going on? Mm hmm. And uh, you, she makes you promise to give them to her after you get them. Uh, unfortunately, you'd go through this first chunker and end up on... Oh, the one difficulty I had with this is there's these like floating larvae. I think they're called Anubises. And uh, the point is that they mirror your movements. So you have to like wa- wa- walk them into fire pits. I didn't get that. I didn't get that they were mirroring my movements. So I was just frustrated for a long time i don't think i saw any of those Uh, i guess in the master quest they're different maybe hmm weird but yeah that's how how that that one i did have to look up that was like the i think i looked up one or two things in this because i i think like i love the boss fight for this dungeon we'll we'll get there in a sec what said it's all right i thought it was fun it was easy (laughs) I appreciate that the game at the end of the game basically is like, okay, you are going to go and do one more dungeon as a kid because we're done here. So why don't we get just a little bit more use out of this time travel mechanic uh, and get a little bit more use out of Baby Link. And I appreciated that, even if I did not appreciate the amount of walking that was involved uh, to teleport back and forth. Right. Because you will have to teleport a minimum of four times for this dungeon. And if you screw up like me, it's more like six or eight. Oh, really? Yes. What happened? I just didn't hit a switch. I saw the switch. I thought I hit the switch. I didn't hit the goddamn button. It took me two hours of running around to realize, oh, I remember this room. Oh, that switch isn't pressed. I never pressed the switch. Because, yeah, this this one uh, I did, like, yesterday morning in an hour. (laughs) It's that last switch that you hit that makes a silver key drop in the first room that you go into as right. Young Link. Yeah. You have to go back in time, go get the key, go forward in time, go back to the room. Oh, it's a pain. no, that's bad. And I had to do it a couple of times. Yeah, I was frustrated. Uh, so you end the dungeon up on- is not difficult. It is, it is a bit time-consuming. I think it's probably the longest one with all the teleporting. Yeah. It's basically the Young League stuff is fun, and you can. It's fun running around and seeing in this dungeon all this stuff where you're like, "Oh, that's again." I'm gonna have to come back as Big Link for that. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna have to come back as Big Link for that. The reason the temple is called the Desert Colossus is because in the middle of the temple is a giant statue of a goddess. What's interesting is there's one inside the temple, one outside the temple. It's a bit of a Chekhov's Desert Colossus, but it never gets used, and it yeah. kind of made me mad. Like, why didn't I fight that giant? <laughs> there is some um, giant there. They're uh, fighting the uh, the mid bosses in this dungeon, which are these armor men. Uh, was ca- trick that, that was the hardest something. part as a kid. Was that I, mean, I didn't die, but it was like okay, this is a pretty challenging fight. I always had the fairies on me, so I was always okay. I think I got knocked down once. Iron Knuckles is what they are called. So that's where you you end up uh, on the hand. That's where you get the silver gauntlet. And as you get it, you uh, that's where Nabaru gets uh, kidnapped by the uh, by the twin sages there, or twin Rovas. Sorry. Yeah. So as a child, Link, you finally find the silver silver gauntlets, and just as you do so. Twin Rova shows up and kidnaps Nabaru. And I don't know. I don't know what tells you to go back to the future, but at that point, you go back to the future. The signs at the front of the 
dungeon. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, go back to the future. It says you need the silver gauntlets before you can go back. So I did that. Well, she does. She makes you promise to give her the silver gauntlets. She says you can't wear them because you're a child. Yeah. And then she gets kidnapped. And I think she says something like, I guess you'll have to break your promise. Oh, uh, that's at the end where, when yeah. you've, uh, I think when you find her, I think. Well, whatever. Yeah. Um, you go back and now you've got the silver gauntlets and these allow you to pick up and move giant blocks. This is another, uh, much like the mirror shield that we're about to get and the golden gauntlets. These are very underutilized skills that are just kind of thrown in at the end. You don't, there's not a ton to do with them outside of these dungeons. There is a puzzle that requires you to use a bomb chew finally. I think maybe there two. is. Isn't that funny? <laughs> yeah. Because you got to, bl- first you got to, open a, a uh, weakness in the wall to get a, sh- a shaft of light onto the, the sun head. And uh, then eventually you get ones where the sun head, you have to move a sun head into the beam of light. And then finally you get the mirror shield where you get to reflect sunlight into the sun head. Yeah. So as an adult, you come back and you, you do the rest of the dungeon. There's not much to talk about other than you do get the mirror shield. There's some light puzzles. It's, it's not particularly, it's, it's kind of nothing. It's nothing. I love the final boss fight, though, where you you get to defeat Twin Rova. Well, let's talk about that. So first, there's a mini boss. So you use the dungeon key, the dungeon boss key. You head into a room, and it's like an antechamber in front of uh, Twin Rova's chamber. And in this antechamber is uh, Twin Rova waiting for you with an iron knuckle. Mm-hmm. They leave for you to fight the iron knuckle. And when you defeat it, it turns out it's Nabaru, and you free her from the curse or the brainwashing or the whatever yep and this is in the future so that means that the gerudos are now totally against ganondorf Mm -hmm. which you know why weren't they but uh, so you free nabaru and she thanks you and then sends you on through to fight uh twin rova and john why don't you tell us all about this boss so they they're twin uh, flying elderly uh, sisters that are, are of the witch trope. They fly fly around. They have witch, uh, stereotypical witch-like faces. Uh, one of them shoots a fire beam at you, and one of them shoots a um, ice beam. And so the trick of this boss fight is to point the ice beam at the fire one with your reflective shield and point the fire one at the ice one. And now the second go-round... Uh, you can't reflect it, but what happens is if they hit you with one of the beams, it starts powering up your shield. So if you get well, three hits, they once you've defeated the first phase of the fight, they combine into one creature. Right, that's it. And so you she need- starts firing fire or ice beams at you, mm-hmm. and you have to. I guess it powers up your shield. Yeah, it starts flashing red. And you have to get three ice beam, catch three ice beams or catch three fire beams and they will alternate. So you can't screw up and catch one of one and then one of the other. It's got to be three in a row of your preferred type, uh, which you can then point at Twin Rova and it will blast her out of the sky and you can do the old stabby stabby. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty fun. It is a good fight. Um, It's a good boss fight. It's clever. It does make use of the mirror shield, which the... Uh, as I was saying, the kind of the game otherwise doesn't much. I mean, it does, but it's not like, you know, some Zelda tools are tools that you will use in every dungeon and to unlock puzzles all over the overworld, like bombs and the hookshot and the boomerang. Some Zelda items you will use in the dungeon that they're used for and then kind of forget they <laughs> exist, <laughs> that, like the mirror shield. Yeah. Yeah. I think this one doesn't even like unlock items outside because norm like normally in other Zelda games, right? Like you get an item and use it for the one dungeon, but then it also gets you some bits of heart outside, but I don't think the mirror shield ever does anything as far as I know. I have to assume there's got to be at least a couple of spots, but I don't know where they are and I could be wrong. It's like the big blocks. You get those silver gauntlets. I know there's got to be a couple of giant blocks around somewhere, but I mean, Mm mm-hmm. It's not like the bombs, where you get the bombs in the dungeon, and then you use the bombs constantly for the rest of the game because they're amazing. Or the hookshot, which you get in the dungeon, and then you use it to navigate the map for the rest of the game. Right. But that's just, I guess, kind of the way it goes. So, uh, finally, you defeat Twin Rova. Mm Mm-hmm. You defeat Twin Rova, and it turns out that Nabaru 
is a sage. Yep, not a shocker. And uh, she joins the sages, and then they're like, oh, okay, cool. Uh, I guess you got all the sages. Now we're ready to... John, I think you're forgetting about something. Okay. What happens when you defeat Twin Rova? Uh... Oh, do they God. get halos over their head? <laughs> John, do they go to heaven? <laughs> so you, Why do these witches go to heaven? You, you cut to Twidrova, and they're like, "Well, now they're they're gonna finally defeat me," and they're like, uh, kind of transparent and ghost like, and uh, then they, they like, don't even realize they're dead at first. They're like, "Oh, you're gonna get it now," and then they look at each other and they go, "Wait a minute, why do you have a halo over your head?" Oh mm-hmm. shit, we're dead. <laughs> they are not super into the fact that they fly up to heaven. And they curse Ganondorf's name the whole time. They're all mad about it. It's pretty funny. Yeah. That's the best cutscene of the game. It was adorable and fun. So you've gotten the six sages and they tell you what? Uh, that you it's now time for you to take down Ganondorf. So you uh, cut to Temple of Time. You are there as an adult with um, Zelda because... Well, first you're there with Sheik, and Sheik's like, there's one secret I have to tell you. I'm Zelda! Bum, bum, bum! John, you asked me a few weeks ago how I reacted to this the first time I saw it. Yeah. But unfortunately, I had had it spoiled for me well before I made it this far in the game. Right. I wouldn't have known this if I had uh, not played Smash Brothers, which, you know, the, the one the Sheik turning into Zelda is kind of a big thing in, with the characters. Well, and I'm sure you've seen memes. And I mean, this is one of those things that's been floating around for years. Everybody, I think, uh, what's the word, has picked it up right. via osmosis. That is something that you can't, unless you played it at the time, I think you wouldn't. And even then, it seems fairly obvious, but I don't know. I don't know if I would have figured it out. Sometimes I'm really dumb. Yeah, I don't know either. Um, I definitely, a friend of mine had already played it by the time I started playing it on his N64, and he was telling me everything that was happening. Uh, You know, like you do when you play games with friends as a kid. Listeners, if you were blown away by this reveal, or if you figured it out already, please write in to squarerootspodcast at gmail.com and tell us uh, about your discoveries. Yeah, I would love to hear that, actually. I would like to see how it affected people who were not already aware. Anyway, the six... So, now, here's the thing. You get a whole cutscene here, and it's long, and I don't remember much about it. Okay, well... So you Zelda tells you the truth that uh, Zelda had to become a warrior to hide away from Ganondorf's spying, and then you hear a, a rumble, a rumble from the ceiling, a rumble from the Bronx, and a rumble in my tummy. <laughs> Ganondorf a rumbly crashes in my through the ceiling and uh, says, "Hey guys, so um, I've got the Triforce of Power." Uh, which is a glo- it's like a hologram on my hand. And, and this is back at the Temple of Time, we should say. Yeah. And uh, Link has the Triforce of Courage on his hand, and Zelda has the Triforce of Wisdom on her hand. Mm-hmm. And if he gets all of us to give our tri or to for Zelda and Link to give their Triforces to Ganondorf, he will have control over the spirit world. This is bad, I guess. He can ruin the everything. Uh, they have the most it is the most convoluted cosmology and it doesn't make any sort of sense. Right. But they basically explain to you that because Ganon was evil, he touched the Triforce in the Temple of Time somewhere at some point uh-huh. while you were frozen. Ganon touched the Triforce, and because he was evil, it split into three pieces, leaving him only with the Triforce of Power, which Mm -hmm. allowed him to, uh, it allowed him to corrupt the Sacred Realm and become a powerful god king in Hyrule for these seven years. If a, they tell you that if a, if a, what person, if a evil person, good person, oh yeah, that touched it, yeah, then. It would have, like, made heaven on Earth or something, but it didn't. So now the Triforces have hidden inside you and Zelda and Ganon. Well, he had his. 
And if he gets the three of them together now, I guess he becomes like God. Mm -hmm. Or if you get the three of them, you can reset it. I don't, it doesn't, what? I I don't understand. (laughs) So what happens is uh, he traps Zelda in what looks like a big shiny rupee. And yep, uh, they love freezing these this girl in crystals. It's one of the <laughs> one of the longest running themes of this game. <laughs> and uh, he floats her right Jeez. out of the Temple of Time. And uh, but he does not get Link for some reason. No, right. he tells you to come come get him. He doesn't want to fight you now. He wants to fight you on his home turf. Right. And so you go to Ganon's castle, which is all spooky and dark. Hyrule and- Castle. Uh, yeah, but it's now Ganondorf's it castle. It is now Ganon's castle. I'm saying it's where Hyrule Castle used to be. Now right. it's Ganon's castle and it's all different. And you have to go, I think, play Zelda's lullaby. lullaby mm-hmm. And that creates a light bridge across the moat, which is now all cavernous and magma-y. So, Ganon. So this final t- temple is uh like six little or final dungeon is six little dungeons in a super mix each one has like two rooms uh none of them are difficult uh if you do the shadow one first you get the golden gauntlet which is you uh, need you to do the forest one first no nope, shadow oh nope. but okay this might be a master quest thing on mine you definitely did the shadow one to get it oh weird you're right. It must be a master quest thing. I did the forest temple first, the forest shrine first, and got the um, golden gloves, mm-hmm. which I then you can turn around, run right back out of the castle, and right at the entrance is a big old the golden gloves, like the silver gauntlets, let you pick up giganto rocks, and there's a giganto rock right outside Ganon's castle that you can pick up and throw, and this will reveal the entrance to the last great fairy who. Gives you a defense bonus. Uh huh. Making the game's difficulty negligible. Yeah. Uh, it's really important that you go get this right away. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> you're going to fight a lot of knuckleheads or whatever the fuck they're called. And those things do a lot of damage. Yeah. Anyway, um, yeah, there's not a lot to say about this, I think. You you go to Deanna's castle. The ground floor is six six little rooms that are all, like, short three or four room mini dungeons. There's one... Each themed around a previous dungeon. That is hidden behind a pillar. But it's mm-hmm. easy to tell where it is because there's a little light a, a path of... Uh, each one's, like, uh, there's a uh, final bridge to Ganon's interior t- a tower, I guess, that is being protected by... There's no cutscene where it says he's ad- abducted the stages, but he basically has abducted the stages and is dragging their magic out of them to uh, buff up and protect himself. Is he? Is that what's happening? I thought that he had utilized, he'd like harnessed these powers as like a magical barrier to keep you out. Uh, and as you go through and break each one, the sage like. I feel like he's kid. I don't back. know. It never says the sages were kidnapped, but it feels like you're rescuing each of the sages because they come out. I see. I thought they were showing up and helping oh, you at maybe, the last minute. Maybe. Well, anyway, um, you're going to go through these six, and this opens up this. The center of this castle is a giant mouth, and you go in, and it's a big stairway up, and you do a couple of simple fights. You have to fight some some so, stolfos again because God mm-hmm. knows this game loves throwing stolfos at you. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I mean, that's kind of it, right? You get to the very tippy top, Mm -hmm. and there's Ganon. So you uh, get to the tippity top, and uh, Ganondorf is there, and uh, he's uh, not super happy to see you. And he's all floating around, and he starts throwing these uh, lightning balls at you. Now, I got to admit, I tried this fight for about 10 minutes and couldn't figure out what I was doing wrong. But eventually, I... Summoned it, not Andraste, but I got some help from Andraste and telling, and she told me how to how to uh, fight back. You have to knock them balls back at him. Yeah. Well. Okay. So let's just let's lay it out. You get to the top of this tower. The first thing that happens after a bit of a Ganon laughing and you know being Ganon is he blasts a big old chunk of floor Mm -hmm. and it disappears. So he is on a pedestal in the middle of the room, Mm -hmm. and you are on the edges. And in between is a gap where he has destroyed the floor, which is a uh, 
Underneath is just a long drop down to the very bottom of the stairs. Now, down there are some pots. So if you do need magic and arrows, you can always just jump down there and get them. Which and is they refill handy. themselves, which is nice. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he will let you climb back up and just leave you alone while he do- while you do it, which is very nice of him. <laughs> yeah, and it took me. It, it definitely took me a while to figure out what to do because I, I Navi just... tells you that because of Ganon's power, she can't target him. So one of the things here is that you, for the first time in this game, for no good fucking reason, yeah. cannot target. Then your and and it's fine that there's a story reason for it, but don't just get rid of the <laughs> way combat works because of th- that was that's a bad call. Like, yeah. I don't know what the point of it was. Yeah. To make it harder, I guess. Yeah. Because it's not hard. Even without Navi, you can still lock into a combat stance by holding down the button, which lets you strafe around. Mm-hmm. And all you're going to do is what you did the first time you fought the Shadow Ganon. You're going to play tennis uh, with his magic spells. You will bounce them at him. He'll bounce them back at you. They'll go back and forth and build up steam. And eventually, uh, unless you unless you screw up, he'll get hit. At that point, you shoot him with a light arrow, now the, which knocks him to the platform, and then you can jump across the gap and give him a good old stabbing in the face. The uh, the first time you fought him when he was in the pictures, I think we talked about this before. I never did the mechanic of hitting his lightning balls at him, and I have no idea how I finished the fight because apparently that's where you learn that you have to do that, and I somehow didn't, and I don't know what I did. That's weird. Yeah. Well, it's not difficult. In fact, it's kind of... Uh, I think they introduced this concept in Link to the Past. Yeah. Uh, and they continued to use it for several years. This concept of playing tennis with your sword and the villain. It's weird. Right. It's, it's fun, though. And it's its its not a hard fight. Like, uh, once I figured out how to defeat him, uh, I got hit once. Mm-hmm. I do like that if you don't catch his spell on your sword and reflect it back at him, that it does destroy another chunk of floor. I like how this level is falling apart around you. Yeah. the Although, because I couldn't figure this out at first, he destroyed all the missing chunks right away. <laughs> so, I just yeah, there's some that he can never destroy. He also has a second attack where he like glows green, uh, gets some green goop above him, and then launches a bunch of lightning things at you, but you can do a spin attack that uh, launches them all back. Yeah, that one's really fun actually. I like that. He he like he does like a Dragon Ball Z thing where he collects an enormous amount of power above his head in one hand, and then he releases like six of these things. And it, but if you do a spin attack, it'll shoot them all right back at him, right? Which lets you jump across the gap and give him a good old stabbing. And then, I mean, that's it. Ganon is yeah. Defeated. You you def- you get uh, Zelda out of her rupee prison, which is just- Ganondorf, I should say. Yeah. Uh, which is like a metaphor, of where, like how we're all trapped by debt. Like if you think about it, man, and that's why she's trapped inside a rupee. It's like wow, real trapped by like our greed and like yeah, yeah. So <laughs> then you gotta like escape the crumbling establishment, like the way that capitalism is crumbling. <laughs> and you have three minutes to get out of this dungeon. Yeah, Zelda's crystal breaks, and she leads. She she offers to lead you out of the crumbling tower. You go down a set of stairs that I don't remember ever seeing before. So is this the back entrance? Why didn't we use this? <laughs> well, uh, also, what happens if the timer runs out? I, that didn't happen to me. So uh, uh, I got killed the first time I fought Ganon. It just restarts you at the top. Oh, okay, that's good. I used up all my magic and um, used up all of the things in the arena. Well, we'll talk about that uh, Mm -hmm. now. So you get to the bottom of the tower just as it crumbles. uh, And lo, you know, it's all rubble. You and Zelda are standing outside of it. I just assume that all the shopkeeping Dekus and the helpless monsters got killed. So that's nice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ganon bursts out of the rubble. Ganondorf bursts out of the rubble, creates a... Barrier of fire between you and Zelda. Mm-hmm. Uh, knocks your this, sword out of your hand. He knocks your sword out of your hand, and this goes flying out of the area, out of the arena that he's created next to Zelda. And then he transforms into a big old tusky face pig man. 
Well, for, when you kill him on top of the tower, he's like, he's dead. He's like, you've defeated me. I can't believe a, a little shrimp like you. But now he comes back. And yeah, he, he, he like goes Super Saiyan. Is that how you say it? Saiyan or Saiyan? Saiyan. He goes Super Saiyan and turns into, it's like, has Ganon been working out? <laughs> suddenly I'm. John, he a pig. Suddenly I'm just way more interested in Ganon. <laughs> He a big gorilla pig man. <laughs> it's just I why is Ganon always a pig man? Is it know, greed? There's, is, there's something is about him. The... I wasn't into him for the rest of the game, but now he, there's just something bit different about him. Just, I don't know. Maybe he's maybe got he's a big got old piggy snout with his hair, and he's got giant piggy tusks, <laughs> big muscles, uh, and two big old piggy swords that he uses to break everything. So it's a small arena. I mean, it's not. This is also not difficult, though. I did have to look it up to figure out what to do. Shooting with your light arrow, which stuns him. You don't have your sword, so you have to pull out the old megaton hammer. Run around behind him. His tail is glowing and kind of looks like it's made of crystal or something. Mm-hmm. So you smash his tail uh, to hurt him. This. Do this a few times, and he, I don't know, like, the barrier falls for a minute, and you run over and get your sword. Why the fuck didn't Zelda throw us this this, sword? This is not the way I defeated him, though. Or at least the first first part. So, what I did was, I I did use the light arrows, but I didn't stun him, which I found out later is a tactic you can do. I just, because you don't have a sword, you don't lock on the same way, so I just... Uh, rolled in between his legs and then just used arrows behind him and, and kept shooting his his uh, tail. Yeah, also an option. Yeah. and You can bomb his tail. Uh, there's a couple of things you can do. Uh, yeah, almost all your items work, I think, to damage him. And yeah, the, when his he gets knocked for the first time, uh, his fire spell goes down. Zelda's like, come here. Your sword's right next to me. I, I could give it to you, but... I know. <laughs> Come, just come here and get, grab it. So you go Why grab you it. Just take the sword and throw it over the fire barrier. Get me my sword. So I, I almost died here. Although you do get healies because if he not if he blasts bits of the ruins, some like hearts or fairies and stuff come out. Mm-hmm. Uh, unfortunately, uh, I, I my tactic of rolling between his legs doesn't work because it, rolling doesn't work the same way if you have a sword. And I forgot that I could just, un- if you don't lock onto him, you can do it again. And that is. Well, here's the thing as well. If you're locked onto his face, when you stun him, if you move around behind him, the target lock will change to his tail automatically. Okay. Which made it really easy to attack him. I found this fight was easier if I didn't lock on him. And I just yeah. kind of rolled between his legs and then attack. Because you're going to hit, that tail is huge. Yeah. He's he's big too. So it's kind of, it you don't have to lock onto him. Yeah. So I, di- I did die here. I had to. I ran out of magic. I had let him destroy everything. Uh, there was nothing left. I couldn't do anything. I ran out of arrows. Uh, I had. I didn't even have the sword yet. I was Oof. I was hitting his tail, uh, and it still was damaging him. You could just get behind him and hit his tail. Yeah. So I did that a few times, and I got the sword, I think. But I don't think it re- – it did not refill my magic, and then I just I- – I couldn't do anything. I just died. Uh, I had to redo it so that I could keep my magic back. Where, and that, um, where does that redo. restart you? It starts you at the top of the tower. Okay. Right is right after you defeat him. Uh, you have to rerun down the tower. Ugh. The second time I fought him, I uh, about halfway through decided to take a break and let him smash the rubble so I could get a little bit more magic just to be safe. And he mm-hmm. actually released a group of fairies. Yep. And I was all out. So I went and bottled all those fairies up. <laughs> And then I was like, well, I'm unstoppable now. Like, it doesn't <laughs> matter what happens at this point. Yeah. Uh, but eventually you defeat him. And you do, uh, as is something that uh, happens several times in this series, you give him a good old sword to the forehead. Yeah. This was, so he's he's stunned. Zelda put, uses his magic to get him uh, immobile. And, yeah, you sink that sword right into his forehead. That was – I was not expecting yeah. that. Yeah, right into his brain. Uh, that happens in Wind Waker as well, and it's more graphic because oh he is humanoid. <laughs> he's, he's Ganondorf yeah. uh, at the end of the game for some reason. So you get a, a real good sword fight between Link and Ganondorf, and Zelda is in the background shooting arrows at him. 
in 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 uh, Wind Waker, and the final attack, you do the same thing. You stab him in the forehead, and it goes in so deep that it looks like it should be coming out the back. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little shocking, particularly in Wind Waker, where it's all cartoony. But anyway, um, yeah, you give him a stab in the forehead, and I mean that's kind of it. Zelda thanks you, and she tells you that uh, you can return to the past to live your life freely. I don't know how that works. And then you get kind of an extended credit sequence where all of the characters from the game have a party at Lon Lon Ranch. Yeah, you, well, she, yeah, because she's like, you, basically, there's going to be a couple of timelines. Thing. This, like, splits up Zelda canon into different timelines if you read that book. That tells you all how all the Zeldas are linked together. He says that you basically you, you summon the power of the sages and the goddesses to seal Ganon away. And he's like, well, I'll come get your ancestors one day. He does. I think Majora's Mask is a direct sequel to Ocarina of Time. But yeah. Wind Waker is also a sequel to Ocarina of Time. Yes, because there's different and then Wind Waker lines. has like two or three sequels. So there's the child timeline where Link has gone back to be a child. There's Zelda's timeline where she's an adult and and uh, Hyrule's been destroyed. And then there's a third timeline where Ganondorf won and killed Link in this timeline. And isn't that the one that leads to the original Legend of Zelda according to the timeline? Yes. We're going to talk about this fucking timeline. We didn't have been talked about it the entire series, and yeah. I've been wanting to talk about it the entire series. So hang on to your fucking butts, folks, because I'm uh, good it. So she sends you back to be Child Link one more time, because that's where you know that's where his consciousness is from. That is, he's still a kid, even if he has an adult body. And uh, he goes and finds. I guess he goes in before the events. That happened where she had to run away, and he goes and meets Zelda, and the game ends on a freeze frame of him about to talk to her uh, in the garden of the Hyrule Castle. Before you All get right. the dance party, which is pretty fun. I like the, the dance party there. is fucking super fun. <laughs> Medi Goron is there. Fail sons are there. Oh, it's great. You're right. That is this is where the timeline split. Why did they do this? So fucking stupid. <laughs> so just for our listeners, just for interest, it goes like this. Skyward Sword is the beginning. Never finished it. Don't know what happens. Following that, you get the Minish Cap and Four Swords. So spinoff games that nobody cares about. Then there is... Ocarina of Time. The Sacred Realm becomes the Dark World. Ganondorf becomes Demon King Ganon. And you're right. There are three timelines. <laughs> In the first one, the hero is defeated. That leads to a link to the past. The Capcom games. I really want to play those sometime. They're very good. I have... I mean, John... If we don't do Link's Awakening for Instant Classic, I will legitimately pitch a fit. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Uh, that leads to Link to the Past, the Capcom gangs, Link Between Worlds, which is excellent. Those games lead to the Monarchs of Hyrule use the Triforce the Tragedy of Princess Zelda 1, which leads to the original Legend of Zelda and the sequel, The Adventure of Link. Mm -hmm. The second timeline, the hero is triumphant. The second, the sacred realm remains protected. This is the adult era? No, this is the child era. So that leads to Majora's Mask, Twilight Princess, and then Four Swords Adventures. Oh, this is... I'm so confused. <laughs> the adult era, Ganondorf is sealed. Ganondorf is resurrected. Hyrule is sealed and then flooded. And that leads to Wind Waker, Phantom Hourglass, Hourglass, Hourglass and Spirit Tracks. Okay. I don't... You know what? I shouldn't have gone into this. I don't understand any of it! <laughs> so stupid. Fuck you, Zelda games. <laughs> Nintendo, you don't have to do this, man. 
you don't have to do this, Nintendo. You can just be like, it's it's different this time. <laughs> Nobody cares. I guess people Call it a really, reboot. People really do care, you know, and so it's definitely something people put a lot of time into. Um, this is just an example of the world before the populace understood the concept of things like reboots and remasters and retcons. So we had to have all these dumb split timelines instead of just saying, yeah, no, this is called The Legend of Zelda and it's a reboot. It's fine. There are always reboots. Well, I guess that's it, John. Do we have anything to add about Legend of Zelda? Ocarina of Time? Well, there was one last bullshit minigame where you run around on the back of a horse and you do target shooting, trying to hit your arrows into these targets to get a chunk of heart. And I, yeah, I got this one right away. And I even got the extra bow quiver. There are three giant targets that you're trying to shoot the middle of. Mm-hmm. There's also a row of pots. And I realized that if you shoot the row of pots, you get an absurd amount of oh, points. I didn't even you get notice 100 those. per pot, which is also what you get for a perfect bullseye yeah. on the targets. And there's like 10. Yeah. So on your first run through, it's pretty easy to just blow all those away and then just rack up a few more points on the way back for the heart piece. And there's also uh, targets on either side, uh, either end of the course. Yeah, so it's just an excuse to make you ride a pony around and do some target practice. But I thought it was heckin' I thought it was fun. Yep, no complaints here. I had a good time, and uh, that's it. Maybe we should trundle over to squarely against. <sighs> Without the other two around, we're really zipping through this last bit. We yep. don't have an email this time either. Hmm. Um, well, ladies and gentlemen, I think it's fairly obvious. Uh, as for what the segment squarely against, uh, what I'm going to say, I am surroundly for this game by far and away. There's some frustrating bits for sure. There always are. It is a hell of a good time, and I'm glad I got to replay it. I'm glad I played it in Master Quest. Uh, something I had been thinking about doing for a long time. And uh, great pick, Vanessa. What um, about you? I recognize the craft that went into it. I definitely figured out how to play it by the end. But I just find this game so frustrating uh, that... See, the problem is, and, and someone said this is going to happen, that by the end of the game you'll like it and you'll forget about all the kind of... Uh, horrible mechanical parts in the middle mm-hmm. and that's kind of true like by the end i'm like well i'm done it was fine uh it's but a bummer I- because if you had come to your kind of let's say epiphany on controls sooner i think you would have enjoyed a lot more of the. i game. think you're right i think you're right that just randomly i was like oh that's how it works okay because the <laughs> the dungeons you complained about the most were kind of the middle of the game which is kind of the those are kind of the best ones in the game, I think. Hmm. They're not too long. Uh, they're they've all got an interesting mechanic for the most part, and they're fun. It's yeah. the early game is all really easy, and the late game is not hard, just too long. So I, I definitely see how presentation wise, this game is outstanding for the era. Although I don't, know, I th- kind of think Metal Gear is better, uh, but presentation wise, the what a weird, why compare the two? What? Because they're the same year. It's like, you know, two different. Are they? Yeah. Huh. Same era, same year. Uh, but I mean, I you're c- talking about two of the most beloved critically acclaimed games yeah. of all time. I don't think comparing them is necessary. I, I still don't think I love this game. Uh, mm-hmm. I don't know if I could even say I like it, but I respect it, even if it's not super for me. And I did find it incredibly frustrating. And yeah, I don't know what, like... I think it's just a lack of exposure to Nintendo games that is one of the main reasons why I'm so bad at them. 
But yeah, I, I mean, they were doing interesting things and trying to, you know, one of the things that still gets me that I, and I saw a listener in front of the show, Matt Jorgensen, regurgitating your awful statements about how clunky the combat is in what to me is one of the craziest fucking things I've ever heard. The combat is smooth and easy. <laughs> it's all about movement. You just run or you circle these things and you hit them. It's more akin to a actual, not IRL, but more akin to what you want, I think, from a, a sword fight. I a lot of games you know, can get to. I remember a lot of people telling me that when the game came out. It's like, oh, it's actually like sword fighting. And just, like, I bounced off the controls so hard mm-hmm. that I just thought people were crazy. Yeah, part of that is just, I mean, let's we've we've, we've said this since, since moment one. The controls, even remastered, don't hold a candle to modern controls. Yeah. And the it, shittiest third-person action game that comes out today has a better control scheme than yeah. one of the best games ever made. And that's just the way it works. Ooh, man, I still I still like I still like that. Still don't like that. <laughs> <laughs> but it really I mean, feels you're welcome to disagree. But I am not like going to pretend like I feel differently. Uh Pixar a, like feels like a Pixar game. It really reminds you of the quality that Pixar puts into its movies that I don't like very much, but they're still mm-hmm. like incredibly well made and I can't say it's bad because it's obviously like a lot of care and thought have been put into this in a way that a lot of other games, especially in 1998, did not have. Mm-mm. No, it's still the case, I think. Nintendo still goes the extra mile. Uh, I, I could talk about Breath of the Wild, but instead, like, take Mario Odyssey, Super Mario Odyssey, for example, as a game that just has so many little touches, controls and plays so well, it's, I think, impossible not to just love I I wonder why do you think it is that it took me what was this game twenty hours long that it took me eighteen hours or sixty to eighteen hours to get a handle on the controls? I'll tell you what it was: lack of instruction. Hmm. This game tells you very little about how to play it. Yeah. Later Nintendo games overcorrect and tell you way too much about how to play the games. Do you think that by th- now that I'm pretty good at the game? I do want to play Majora's Mask because that game just seems like the most interesting one. Uh, do you think that I've I'll have an easier time? That one. It's fucking hard. With late- that three day time limit thing is annoying as fuck, and I don't understand why people like it. But you can. I think you get a spell eventually that lets you mess around with it. Yeah, I think so. Um, I would like to do that as well. I actually own that and was looking for it when I finished this and could not find the cartridge. Oh, so. Uh, last time I saw it, it was on my dresser, and it has probably vanished into my children's room. Oh, anyway, um, yes, I I think – I mentioned this, I think, last time. I think that, if anything, what you could play after this or what we could play after this eventually would be uh, Wind Waker. Hmm. Wind Waker has a similar control scheme, but with modern a modern controller. Yeah. But now that you have a grasp on that combat uh, – Coupled with a modern controller and a modern control scheme, I think you would find Wind Waker to be a lot more fun. And it does continue this same tradition of having just a colorful, silly cast of characters that you kind of can't help but love. Yeah, uh, it's so I am I am roundly for this game. Wow. In the end. Big turnaround. Yeah, it's that I could play it. At the end, I, I figured it out. I didn't have any problems with the, like the last chunker, other than the stealth section. I didn't have any problems with the controls. Yeah. But it was Wind such Waker a difference. on that fucking tradition, too. But at least they do it at the beginning of the game. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I think that's as far as I got. Because I was like, yeah, oh, that one's no, little, I hate That this. one's a little annoying. Uh, John, I actually plugged the Wii U in yesterday for the kids to play with and uh, was eyeballing Skyward Sword. Is, not Skyward Sword. Uh, Wind Waker is on there. I kind of want to play it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, but not right now. Not anytime we have, soon. No, we have something new to play. Ooh. Next bah, week, we bah, will begin. Bah. Next week, we will begin our coverage of Fallout 1. And that's it. So long, Ocarina of Time. War. <laughs> War never changes. Or never changes. <laughs> God, I hate. Like, <laughs> I am not looking forward to Fallout. <laughs> Yay! <laughs>
<laughs> Take that, I've Matthew. talked so many times about how much I hate this 50s pastiche bullshit. I hate it. Uh, I, I, it's really interesting seeing because I have no nostalgia for 90s era PC games because that's when I didn't have a PC that could play mm-hmm. games. Uh, well, let's, maybe we'll, we'll get more into John's uh, problems with PC gaming uh, around that era where my parents gave me for my 21st birthday – oh, no, for my 20th birthday, a super powerful gaming PC that was – ridiculously expensive and i you know i'm not bragging here it's just a thing that happened and then uh a year later couldn't run any games because that's what pc gaming was like in the 90s and like i had a matrox video card with 64 megs of ram and it was like the the hottest thing yeah a year later i had needed a new, new new motherboard new video card and i just gave up because i just couldn't keep at the time you had to keep replacing your parts on pc every year it was ridiculous and a waste of money. Um, I have, let me think for a second. I have my own hangups with 90s PC gaming that have to do with some family stuff that actually makes playing some of these games really uncomfortable for me. Oh, okay. Um, it's related to a person who introduced me to them who then very horribly betrayed my family. Uh, I don't want to get into the details of it, so I won't. But so a lot of this stuff actually for me is kind of bringing, bringing up some old memories of stuff that I don't like thinking about. So uh, I guess I'll talk about that a bit. We'll talk about it a bit more next time, but it's, it's a bit weird. And I kind of particularly this type of game and strategy games are are inherently kind of tied together for me with some people in my life that uh, are best left behind. So it's going to be kind of difficult, actually, but we will get through it. We are going to play it. War is never going to change. And yeah, that's it. But no more two-handers, we promise. No more two-handers. <laughs> oh, I think we did fine. Yeah. Um, we have well, a Patreon, Matt. We have a Patreon. No email this week, ladies and gentlemen. I apologize. Uh, I used some Patreon funds to get that uh, Logitech G935 microphone that I, or headset that I like so much for streaming. Uh, so I'm looking forward to getting a chance to use that. I've been too, way too busy <laughs> to actually have fun with it, but I will. Uh, I'm very excited. It is. I think it's good to let the patrons know what we do when we do. Not every time we spend the funds, because sometimes we just buy shit for ourselves. But uh, for some stuff, so I'll say that I got recently uh, using patron funds. I got a license for Reaper, which is the audio editing program that I use. I've been using a an old license list version for about two years, and it has become not great. <laughs> it's a little old. <laughs> Yep. And I can't update it. But uh, I was finally able to update and get the the latest version. And it was actually pretty cheap. It was only 60 bucks because Reaper is pretty cheap for small small stuff like us. And uh, yeah, ladies and gentlemen, that is what the Patreon funds are for. We do not, you know, go out and buy ourselves steak dinners or pay our rent. Uh, we are putting these funds right back into the show um, so that we can continue producing it. Uh, at the highest quality we can, and we hope that you, you know, we hope that you continue to give. We hope that if you're not a patron and you're able to, you you sign up. There's two different tiers. There is the uh, $3 tier, where you get access to all of our Patreon episodes. There's uh, a couple of dozen now. Uh, we will have, this month, Hatoful Boyfriend. And then we got to figure out what to do for our Instant Classic next month. Yeah, I need something new to play. We'll figure I'm, it out. I'm, we'll think I'm about it this struggling. week and uh, get back to you on that. Um, you know what I just downloaded that we're going to have to do for the show eventually? What? Borderlands 2. <laughs> well, that that's a 2011 game. So, uh, no, oh, 2012, is it really? 2012 game. Borderlands no, 1 is 2009. So that's ready mm. to go. Yeah, that remaster just came out too. So that's that might be a good one to jump on later this year. Yeah, we'll uh, see. Anyway... 
Uh, the second tier is uh, $5 a month, and in that one, you get to vote. We do uh, voting for bonus episodes as well as for main series games. I think that um, we'll definitely have another vote soon because we're doing Hattoful this month. And uh, then we'll do have another versus coming up in a month or two that we can maybe do a vote for. And we're definitely, I would say, after Fallout, to make sure we can get it done by the end of the year, the game after Fallout we should have a vote on. Uh, I agree. We should definitely get a get another vote in there. Uh, part of the uh, one of the benefits of being a patron is that we do read the full list of current patrons at the end of the show, and we're going to do that right now. So a big thank you to Benjamin Avner, Kiva Mosser, Mishi Draws, Sean Walsh, Kyle, Vanessa's mom, Brian Stone, PJNs, Chris Pignac, Nathan Poirot, Wonder Swan, John Kissick, Doctor Steve Stone. Jonathan Lee, Justin Ham, Rusty Kamada, G Bailey, D Jethro, Brody Toy, Rusty Tomato, <laughs> what? <laughs> James Hotstetler, Michael Crawford, Aaron Bachman, Mary Queen of Scoffs. What is it you have against Miguel Torres? Huxley Iguana, Ross Hartley. Brian Pitt, Robert T, Jonathan Ellsworth, Cyril the Wolf, Sean Gonzalez, Square Roots, Jim's TM Inside no, no, Story. It, it's, it, it doesn't take the apostrophe, so it's Jim's Inside Story. Jim's Inside Story. Label Sack, James Plett. Hey, listen. Race Jenkins, Devin Sloan, T. Bumpkins has slain the father of Julian Titus. I'd also like to thank Jameson, Tom, Nature Boy, Ric Flair, woo, woo! Va- Vanessa's mom, Vanessa's fourth mom, Godzilla is a big fan of Stephen Croc. Hey, hey, listen, it's Ashley T, Owen Marvel, Jason, Jared Collins, Jake Dickerson asks, why did Navi get on Google to find a link? Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> Good one. Uh-huh. Metal Max Returns is great. Jerry Abe Samus, Florian Jonas Kramer, Jim's Appendix, Brady A. Berman, David ah. Shuck, George Frady, Galendo, Patrick W. Bears, Julia Zanella, Justin Benoit, Eric Garvey. Hey, it's Jim's Appendix. Now that I'm free, I want to rule this world. <laughs> Randy Pierce, Zachary Davis, Sammy Mitchell, Stool Skeel. There can only be one, Nandy Best. That says Bobby there Mi- can be only one. Oh, sorry. There can be only one, Andy Best, Bobby Midkiff, Andrew Granieri, Majora's Mask, or We Riot, Ward <laughs> is also not an RPG, Gregory, Bree Girth, Megan Sullivan, Tracy Tanoff, and finally, Robert, oh, no, there's more, Robert M. Pullum, Ba Weep, Grana Weep, Nini Bong, Legend of Zelda, Macaroni in Time, <laughs> Ross Disney, fine, say everyone's name, at least it annoys Matt. And Cameron Show. Thank you, Show patrons, it. listeners. Uh, we didn't have an email this week for the first time in quite some time. So get on board. Send us an email. Email if us you about did send Zelda. Send us an email, and we didn't actually read it. Uh, oops. Email <laughs> us about Fallout. Email us with your address if you want a sticker, and we'll make Matt do it. Yeah, uh, I am collecting addresses for stickers. I only have one so far. No, there's, uh, I think there's like two in the email. Oh, I think oh, I also, that's right. I haven't been checking the email. I got somebody Facebook messaged me. Right. Yeah. There's, there's, anyway. There's quite a few. Listeners, please send us an email at squarerootspodcast at gmail.com. And if you would rather not email, you can always come see us at our Facebook group, the Square Roots Podcast group for smart, cool, very attractive people. Or alternately, you can tweet at us at Square Roots Pod. Thanks to the consoles for the jazz cover of Zelda's Lullaby. Find the consoles on YouTube, Facebook, and more. Links in the show notes. And don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe on iTunes or where you've listened to podcasts, because that makes our show more visible. And the 44th ranking podcast about video games on iTunes. Nice. Yeah. It's been a while since we've seen like a real bump in listenership. I don't know what we need to do. We need to save up for an ad. Yeah, we do. All right. Anyway, uh, well, that's it, folks. Thank you so much for listening. We do apologize that it was just the two of us this week. Uh, you know, sometimes a two-hander to completion is just what you need. Next time, we're going to have so many hands. <laughs>
It'll... It's going to be a real hand job. That's going to be the Square Roots joke. Podcast. <laughs> My name is Matthew Van Zant. I'm John Brandon. Bye. 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 That was sad and sweet. I gotta go talk to the kids real quick. I'll be right back. No problem. I'll vamp. Uh, So it's just John here, and I know that you're listening on your way to dreamland. So all of my little sleepy buddies, uh, hello and welcome to John Square Roots Snooze Time. First, we'll talk about how your sleepy little heads need to be on a soft pillow. And then we'll go get you a nice little sleepy time tea. I'll just... Oh, I've got some right here, and I'll just go ahead and steep that. Looks like it's tea time for sleepy people. And uh, now why don't we just tuck you right in, and then I'll read you a short story. A story that you like that makes your eyes so sleepy, nappy, ready for snoozes. That's right, it's been John's Sleepy Time Corner. Have a great sleep. This is gonna be a fucking rough one. nice break from just dungeon grinding what's bless you godzilla godzilla is my non-denominational god bless you i like it um